Welcome back to Floki's Models. Today we're going to be painting the Skelt of Rivia figure from the Witcher series. I printed this on my Elugo Mars resin printer, and I'll put a link to the file down in the description. So let's get to painting. Go ahead and connect his legs and torso together using Milliput. This will also help fill any gaps that he might have. Millie Putt is a two-part epoxy putty that you mix together in equal amounts. It is really good if you have large gaps or what you're working on you really need to hold together. It comes in many colors. I'm just using white because that's all I could find at the store at the time. I prefer to work with the yellow because it's easier to tell when it's completely mixed together. I'm pushing this together really tight, uh, pushing out extra putty. I want to make sure that there is no gaps when it's dry. Using a toothpick, I remove any extra as well as start to form and blend it into the pants. Gerald gets his arms attached using CA glue. Going over to the spray booth, I spray the figure a all over coat of Tamiya Gem and Grey. Moving back to my workbench, I get out my wet palette and start off with some Vallejo Leather Brown. Wet palette is really easy to make and it's a must for figure painting. It's just a Rubbermaid container with a thin sponge and a piece of parchment paper. I've had paint stay workable on the palette for up to a week. I'm sure it'd probably stay longer than that, but I've never tried. The first pieces to get painted this leather brown is this shoulder armor. I'm sorry, I don't know the correct terminology for this. Another thing I forgot to mention is this paint gets thinned down with two drops of distilled water. The pa red palette is also filled with distilled water. And the first piece painted looks nice and smooth. I'm going to use that leather brown to also paint the straps on his chest that hold on the shoulder armor that we just painted. The reason why I use distilled water on my wet palette is because there's no impurities in the water that might affect the paint or the figure or the outcome of the finish. The center of that big strap that we just finished painting will be painted a darker leather brown color, so we'll get back to that in just a few minutes. Moving on, also using Vallejo leather brown, we're going to be painting the armor that's on his upper arms.
still using Vallejo leather brown, the armor around his waist is painted in. Using a mixture of Vallejo deck tan and light gray, I mix up the color for the quilted sleeves. It looks really light going on, but once dry, it ends up being the exact color I was wanting. The quilting texture that's in this model is just amazing. The creator did a really good job. And here both sleeves are finished. Vallejo German Camo Black Brown will be used for the darker leather items. Here's the center of that strap that we painted the outside leather brown. I like to start by painting the edges first and then going and filling in the middle. Other items get painted this darker color is the smaller straps on the chest, the belt, straps for the arm armor, and also over the knuckles here. A darker mixture of light gray and deck tan is used for the quilted stitching area on the sleeves. You don't want the mixture too much darker, you just want it to be slightly noticeable. Here it is painted on. Like I said, it's just a little bit darker than the rest of the sleeve. Vallejo Luftwaffe Uniform and German Gray are mixed together to get the dark blue-gray look for the pants. And also like I did on the sleeves, a darker color is mixed up for the quilted stitching area. I mix Vallejo oily still with water. It's a thick paint so it took a lot of water to get it to the consistency that I wanted.
All the areas of the armor covered in chainmail gets painted this oily steel. Again, the detail of the chainmail is really good, just like everything else has been on this figure. The creator did an excellent job. The Witcher Wolfhead medallion, along with all the buckles, also get painted in this Vallejo oily steel. Leo orange brown is mixed with the leather brown I already have on the palette. I mix this color up really thin. I'm going to use it on the edges of all the dark leather items to show wear. After the acrylic paints have dried for about an hour, I use a pre-made enamel wash from MIG. This is going to be ran into all the detail in the chainmail to really make them pop out. Here is the wash applied to all the pieces of the chainmail. You can see that it really makes the detail stand out. Starting on painting Geralt's face, I'm using Andrea's flesh paint set. I first put down a layer of number 4 highlight. I know this looks really stark now, but it will come together with a lot of blending. I start going over that first layer with number one base. With both colors on the ref palette now, I move back and forth between the two to get a good mixture of highlights and base. Both these colors are also really thin. You want to thin them down to where the paint just starts to draw back in on itself on the palette. Luckily this figure, Geralt has his eyes closed so I don't have to paint them. I am really terrible at painting eyes. Painting Geralt is a lot different from what I'm used to since he's extremely pale, so I really didn't use any shadow tones. Number 6 shadow was put inside the ears, the lips, and also used to paint a scar. Thank you. 
in the finished space. A mixture of Vallejo light gray and black is mixed together and dry brushed on girl's hair. This is done pretty heavily. I want to try to get as much of it covered with this darker gray, but still let some of that German gray show through. After that went down, a lighter mix of gray and black is then used. Then to finish his hair up, a light brushing of straight light gray is used. The figure has a couple strands of hair running down the front of his face that I then detail paint in. Finish up assembly by CA gluing on Geralt's head and his shoulder armor. I'm really happy with my resin printer and how this figure turned out, and I'm excited about making more in the future. And finally all assembled. And here he is. Geralt of Rivia, the White Wolf, Witcher. In the next video, I'm going to be making a book nook built around this figure. I hope you all enjoyed this build. If so, I hope you guys will subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. And as always, never stop creating.